Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Right, well unfortunately today I have to decommission one of my tape libraries. It's the one in the corner over there, the Breeze Hill Q47. Uh, the reason I have to decommission it is because the power supply burned out about three or four months ago. Um, I was searching online for one, um, I couldn't find one simply because they're obsolete and the company's gone out of business and because this isn't a, a run of a mill Compaq or HP or ATL like I've got there it's very hard to come by the parts so in the end I ended up uh, designing my own power supply out of, um, out of an old ATX power supply there. Um, as soon as I connected it up um, the lot, all the lights came on, it seemed okay um, but unfortunately the, the front panel was lighting up but it didn't display anything. So when I pulled it out I noticed that there were two, um, two lights which were lit up on the CPU module at the back. Now this one, uh, this here has two LEDs, it's got one here at the bottom, one at the top. Uh, one is green and one is red. Now if a red one is lit on its own it simply means that it's not receiving enough power. Uh, if the green one is lit on its own it means it's in normal functioning mode. Uh, but if they're both lit, it means that it's receiving power and the CPU has failed, um, which means that the whole unit is dead, unfortunately. Now, because I'm completely unable to repair this, uh, not because of hardware, but because of software, uh, in the manual it says you can replace these CPU modules, obviously, but you need to get the firmware direct from Brees Hill. Now, Brees Hill went out of business years ago, which means it's going to be absolutely impossible to get hold of any software or firmware for this unit. Um, I mean, it was hard enough in the first place to try and find uh, a backup system which would actually run this. In the end, I, I ended up using Retrospect, which fortunately also supports my uh, two ATL systems here. Uh, what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to let you have a look at some of the parts because despite its, its massive size and massive um, data capacity uh, for its day, I mean, it holds uh, 4.2 terabytes of compressed DLT data across uh, 60 DLT 7000 tapes. So uh, for something which was built in September 1999 and cost £65,000 plus that, it's, uh, it's quite a beast really, it's quite a, quite a massive machine. Uh, in a way I suppose I'll be glad to be rid of it uh, in some ways because it's taking up so much space so uh, at least now I can get some newer stuff or at least different stuff in here shall I say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the CPU board in detail because it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting. Okay, here's the CPU board. First thing you'll notice is that we've got a Western Digital Caviar SCSI controller at the top here. Um, we've, got some more, we've got some other SCSI interface chips just along here. Um, we've got a 9801 RS232 controller here. We've got the 8051 8-bit microprocessor for the library which controls the barcode reader for robotics and everything else. We've got a series of memory chips here which hold the uh, data for the barcodes and such. Um, we've got some analog chips here which would control um, the data sent to the robotics and the barcode reader and such. We've also got a small BIOS chip here which is an 8-pin eight, eight DIP chip. Now it's actually quite interesting because the 24, this is a 24C02N which is still in use today in some Dell laptops. The only difference is more modern ones would be surface mount. Um, we've also got a couple of batteries here which are each 3 volts, um, so 6 volts in total. Um, this is simply to keep the, the system alive um, while it's switched off so that you don't lose any data. Down here we've just got a small amount of power circuitry um, just for power management and such. We've got some transistors, resistors and a couple of capacitors. Now what you'll notice um, near each of these chip is it has its own capacitor um, to ensure it has a, a constant supply of power. We've got a couple of crystals on here. Uh, this one is um, this one is 3 kilohertz and this one over here is uh, 16 megahertz. Now on the back here we've got um, we've got two SCSI ports. Um, th this is actually HVD SCSI, which is high voltage differential. Uh, this runs on 5 volts rather than 3.3 volts, which standard SCSI devices run on. Um, these are daisy chained together, so you'd have one running into the PC or the server, and you'd have this one going out to the rest of the library, uh, the tape drives mainly. Now we've got an RS232 port here, which I, I used in in the past for configuration. Um, and these are the two LEDs which I mentioned earlier. 
Now I've got another board here which is the um, power supply board for the robotics. Um, this is simply a power, power board, it hasn't got much processing capability at all. Um, it's got three relays here um, with three MOSFETs. We've got four capacitors here, um, we've got some more MOSFETs along the top and uh, we've also got uh, a failure LED on the back just here. Um, which, which I didn't notice was lit up, so uh, maybe this board is okay. Um, we've also got some ST branded chips here. I think a lot of these would just be uh, Darlington pear chips. Then we've got some more resistors over here, a couple more capacitors, well, one capacitor on each MOSFET. Um, and we've got another small, another couple of small chips at the back here. But in general, it's all just for power management for the uh, robotics. Okay everyone, well thanks for watching and I'd also like to say thank you to uh, YouTube user Mike's Electric Stuff. Um, he was able to help me with, uh, well he gave me some advice on how to repair this power supply board and uh, despite the fact that unfortunately it still didn't work after he advised me on which components to replace it was, uh, it was very kind of him to reply and uh, take the time to, uh, to advise me so I'd just like to say thanks to him as well. Um, I've got some more stuff turning up on Friday. I've got a couple of um, tape libraries. I think these ones are Compaq. I've also got an old Compaq ProLine 6500 server turning up, which uh, which will be interesting to tear down. So uh, I should have those videos up over the weekend. So please subscribe, leave some comments, and uh, thanks once again for watching.